Good morning. This is Kasturi Day. I'm going to continue today with the question answer section of the nervous system in humans according to ICC syllabus class 7. Okay. Now I start. This is uh, first question is choose the most appropriate answers. The reaction of an organism to a stimulus is called the options are response, reflex, shock or none of these. The answer is response. Then second question is it nourishes the brain and absorbs shocks. What is that? That nourishes the brain and absorbs shock. The uh, options are cerebrospinal fluid, skull, pericardial fluid and spinal cord. The answer is cerebrospinal fluid. The fluid which remains in the uh, uh, canal from the brain that continues uh, in the inside the brain as well as in the spinal cord that is called cerebrospinal fluid that fluid is called cerebrospinal fluid the vertebral column protects the spinal cord cerebrum cerebellum and liver the vertebral column protects the spinal cord it controls heartbeat breathing and other involuntary movements the options are cerebellum, cerebrum, medulla and none of these. The answer is medulla. This is the uppermost part of the brain. Cerebellum, cerebrum, medulla and none of these. The answer is cerebrum. Now the short fibers extending from the cell body of a nerve cell are called dendrons, axons, dendrites or ganglia. The answer is dendrons. Dendrons are the short fibers which extend from the cell body of a nerve cell, that is the cytome. The message that travels along a nerve is called the stimulus, response, sensation or impulse. It's the impulse that travels along a nerve. Okay, then this is the center of for intelligence and memory. The options are cerebellum. Cerebral, cerebrum, medulla oblongata and the spinal cord. The center of intelligence and memory is the cerebrum. Answer is cerebrum. This part of the brain maintains the balance of the body. The balance of the body is maintained by cerebellum. Okay, the options are cerebellum, cerebrum, medulla oblongata and spinal cord. The answer is cerebellum. The spinal cord is an extension of cerebellum. Cerebrum, vertebral column or medulla oblongata. It's an extension of the medulla oblongata. Okay. Now, the 11th one is body posture is maintained by cerebrum, cerebellum, medulla, spinal cord. Body posture is maintained by the cerebellum. The option B, cerebellum. Now, I come to the fill in the blanks section. First one, the dash is the basic structural unit of the nervous system. Answer is neuron. A, <coughs> excuse me. A single long fiber extending from the cell body of a neuron is called the axon. Okay. The central nervous system comprises of dash, brain, dash and dash. It comprises of brain and spinal cord. The dash nervous system comprises the nerves arising from the brain and the spinal cord. The peripheral nervous system. Peripheral nervous system comprises the nerves arising from the brain and the spinal cord. The brain is enveloped by these three membranes. They are called meninges. Many short fibers called dendrons arise from the cell body and further divide to form dendrites. Okay, short fibers called dendrons, uh, uh, from the which come from the cyton, that is cell body of the nerve cell, and they these dendrons further divide into dendrites. The A dash is a junction where communication between the two neurons occur. It's the synapse. Nerve cells where join when joined end to end form a nerve. Okay. Dash carry impulses from the brain and the spinal cord to the muscles and the glands. It's the motor nerves. Now we come to the true and false. We have to uh, write true and false on, and uh, we have to correct the false statements also. 
Each nerve cell consists of a cell body, many short fibers and a long fiber. This is a true statement. Mixed nerves carry impulse from the sense organs to the spinal cord. That's false. Mixed nerves transmit impulses from the central nervous system to the muscles of the body. Okay. Then we come to the third one where the cerebellum is the largest part of the brain. That's false. The cerebrum is the largest part of the brain. Thinking, reasoning and memory are controlled by medulla oblongata. That's false. It's controlled by the cerebrum. The cerebrum controls the balance of the body. That is also false. The cerebellum controls the balance of the body. Messages along the neuron travel in the form of a wave of chemical disturbances called a synapse. That is called impulse, not synapse. So the statement is false. Uh, the human brain is the main control center of the nervous system. That's true. Voluntary action is a quick automatic response to the stimulus without the involvement of the brain. That's false. It's a reflex action is a quick and automatic response to a stimulus without the involvement of the brain. Now we come to the difference between sensory nerves and motor nerves. Okay. The sensory nerves are responsible for converting external stimuli into internal electrical impulses. Whereas motor nerves control effector organs like the muscles and glands and uh, muscles and glands directly or indirectly. Sensory nerves consist of a short axon whereas motor nerves have a long axon. Sensory nerves consist of a receptor, whereas motor nerves do not consist of receptor. Then sensory nerves, their cell body is situated in the dorsal root ganglion of the spinal cord. No dendrites are found in it. Whereas in motor nerves, the cell body is situated in the ventral root ganglion of the spinal cord and they consist of dendrites. Sensory nerve consists of one long dendron, whereas motor nerves consist of many short dendrons. Sensory nerves carry signals from the outer part of the body into the central nervous system, whereas motor nerves carry signals from the central nervous system to the outer part of the body. Okay. Uh, then... Sensory nerves are found in the skin, eyes, ears, tongues and nose. That is all the sense organs. Whereas in motor nerves are found in the muscles and glands. Okay. Now we come to the differentiation between cerebrum and cerebellum. The largest part of the brain is the cerebrum. The cerebellum is the second largest part of the brain. Then cerebrum forms 83% part of of the total brain weight, whereas cerebellum forms 11% of the total uh, of the brain weight. Okay. Then cerebrum divide into two cerebral hemispheres by a median longitudinal cerebral fissure. What is that? It's a groove or a deep furrow between the two hemispheres. There is a deep groove or a deep furrow that's called median longitudinal cerebral fissure and it divides the cerebrum into two hemispheres. Okay. Right and the left hemisphere. Then a cerebrum, cerebellum rather, divided into two cerebral hemispheres by a median vermis. What is that median vermis? It's a narrow worm-like structure. Worm-like structure found, worm means uh, an insect, what do you call it? Worm-like structure found in the human brain between the hemispheres of the cerebellum. Okay. Here, the two hemispheres, cerebral hemispheres, cerebellar hemispheres are divided by a worm-like structure. Okay. In the uh, human brain. And in cerebrum, there's a groove-like structure, deep fissure-like structure, which divides into Two hemispheres. Now, cerebrum, the gray matter innervates white matter, uh, innervates the white matter uh, into the white matter and forms basal nuclei. 
that is basal ganglia comprising of a distributed set of brain structures. Whereas white matter in case of cerebellum, white matter innervates into grey matter and forms branching tree-like structure called arborar vitae. Okay, it's a tree-like structure. Then cerebrum controls voluntary activities like muscle and movements, uh, then walking, etc. Whereas cerebellum controls involuntary activities like sneezing, coughing, hiccup, etc. Okay, now we come to the voluntary action and reflex action differentiation. Then the voluntary action is initiated in the brain, whereas reflex action is initiated in the muscle receptor. Voluntary action occurs consciously, whereas in reflex action occurs unconsciously. Voluntary action neither automatic nor fast, rather it's a slow process, whereas reflex action is automatic and fast. Voluntary action cannot be learned, whereas reflex action is inborn. Sorry, voluntary action can be learned. You can learn that action. Hmm. But reflex action is inborn. Then voluntary action, nerve impulses always reach the brain. Whereas reflex action, in case of reflex action, nerve impulses do not reach the brain. Then uh, we have certain short answers. I'll continue with in the next video. And please do uh, refer to the main theory chapter, theory video, so that you can have a better understanding of the chapter and you can solve the questions much more better and uh, you can uh, clear your doubts, okay? And still if you have doubts, you can please write in the comment box so that I can uh, respond to, to your uh, questions and uh, if you like the video, please do press the like button and do subscribe to have the notification of my next video. Thank you.